Hey guys, what's happening? It is Nate from Player Court. Today we're talking about how to get more power on the forehand using the kinetic chain. All right, part two of our Unleash the Forehand for More Power series, and today it's all about the kinetic chain. If you missed part one, we talked about creating racket head speed with several exercises, but today we're talking about what's happening from the ground up. Before we investigate and really deep dive about what is happening from the ground up, we're gonna talk about what's happening with the upper body. All right, when we're teaching tennis, we always wanna start with the hands, and then we work down Today, let's talk about the coil and the uncoil, all right? Because this is a huge, huge part. You can still load appropriately, you can still use your lower body, but if you don't know how to coil and uncoil, it's gonna create problems. So what we're talking about is from your ready position of getting into your unit turn and appropriately loading your hips, all right? Your hips and shoulders. Your, the, the, the wind up of what's happening on your unit turn is just like a rubber band, the way a rubber band stores energy as you pull it back, and this is happening through our core, specifically our obliques, all right? So this is really important that when I'm turning that I feel this stretch in my core. I'll also feel it through the pectorals as I rotate back. All right, now what will happen is that sometimes you think you're coiled and you're not coiled enough. And what we'll see is the racket going back and the front hand, the, the non-dominant hand, staying forward. This isn't the same. This might be where you're lacking power. On the reverse of that, sometimes we're overcoiling. It's just important to note that, that if we're staying here too long with the back hand, we can overcoil and break down timing. And if the timing breaks down, then the contact gets funky. All right, but what we're talking about is, is this coil to where as I'm moving back, the hand separates about here, and I'm loading through, you know, right about parallel with the shoulder. It's not necessarily breaking that plane, but I'm letting go, and that is the appropriate coil. A really interesting tool for understanding the coil uncoil is the Chinese drum. All right, it takes you right back to the Karate Kid. I know. But don't worry, we're not gonna do a crane kicks or anything like that. But what is, I was actually watching the movie not too long ago, Cobra Kai, if you haven't seen it, you gotta check it out, right? Um, but what happens with the Ch Chinese drum is that this energy transferred of when you turn the drum, the weight of the bead on the end of the string strikes the drum on the back end. But then as it uncoils, the opposing bead on the other side then strikes the other side of the drum. And this is what we see on the coil on coils. Very, very similar. As I'm here, right, and I'm loading this energy, as I power through the legs, there's a lag, and I create this energy that's transferred as the rocket catches up to the ball. All right, so now that we know what's happening on the top part of the body, let's talk about how we appropriately load the legs, this nuclear power source, loading the legs to really fire the core so we can have that coil uncoil effect. So when we're talking about loading energy from the ground up, there's multiple ways to do it. The, the open stance is what we see the most, it's probably the most talked about, and we'll get to that in a moment, but I think it's important to note that there's two other methods. And the one that we see is off the front foot and right like so when when the game was played predominantly linear this is what we saw the most we still want to be on our front foot when we can be right we still see on the atb wta when players get a short ball or they get a weak ball they're stepping in and the energy that's being transferred on a short ball or a ball that's being stepped in on is that when they're stepping they're loading the front leg there's an energy transfer, like they're not, they're not all the way out on the front leg. There's an energy transfer still from the back leg to the front leg. But what's happening is they work out to contact, there's a pivot, right? And whether they're going to the net and they would continue forward, they're using this pivot step to create the power. But it is still very much so loading from the back leg to the front leg, all right? Just a little bit more nuanced where the, as I'm loading, that weight transfer comes through out to contact. Now the second one that we're gonna talk about 
is what happens a lot of times when we're playing on the rise or we're defending a really deep ball with heavy pace. And this is where we're going, the energy is going through both legs. We're working down and then we're rising up with the ball. We're still pushing down and then we're still lifting up. All right, when we're doing this, it is important to note though, you've got to control your head, your upper body. As I push through, I still want to keep my head down because if I raise my head up, the energy starts working on a different path. The energy should always be out into the court, although it may feel like it is a lift up, I'm still rotating out towards the court. All right, so the next one we're going to talk about is the open stance and I'm gonna give you a little drill to practice exactly how this should feel. All right, so the open stance, it's what we see a ton because of the pace of the game, how fast the ball is moving now. Especially if you're a doubles player, you're gonna see this with the ball playing predominantly or in the diagonal, but definitely in singles, it's what is predominantly used unless a player's able to step in and attack the ball. But as a coach, what I see a lot is the open stance and the loading phase, the loading phase of the outside leg being done incorrectly. We refer to this as leg drive. All right. And so what happens is that if I step forward or I step too far to the side without a proper coil, everything's going to break down. When I'm stepping out, I always want my outside leg to be at an angle where it's behind my front foot so that I can load my hip. All right. Now, something else we see is not enough knee bend. All right or an over knee bend where the knee travels over the toe and then I can't fire the hip the way that I should. So with the mat down, anything that you can step up on, the tool that you're gonna use is as you step up to the mat, you push your energy up. This teaches you to appropriately use the leg drive and from here, you're gonna transfer the weight back to the left foot as a righty. As a lefty, you'll transfer it to the right foot. But I'm here, I load, and I'm working through. If I had a little bit more pace coming at me, maybe I'd work a little bit with the leg off and go from here, but that is the exercise, all right? Grab a mat or anything you can step up on, and the energy that you transfer pushing yourself up is the same exact energy that you're gonna use without a mat. I wanna load and push myself up and drive that hip. All right, so from the demo, you saw several different footwork patterns, but they're all using that back leg to the front leg loading where we're getting that leg drive. So let's put it all together. What does this mean? When I coil and I stretch my obliques and I load this outside leg, as I raise up, the racket will lag. It'll enter into the slot on a lot of fancy words. Just remember that the racket lagging is important because as I start to uncoil that racket leg out, lag out to contact, so we're gonna get all the power, 
All right, it's important to note that you've got to control tension. If you're holding the rocket super, super tight, doesn't matter if you do all this stuff, it's still gonna come off you know, relatively inefficient. All right, so make sure that contact is out in front and you're staying loose and you're gonna be cracking at four hands. You're gonna be unleashing four hands in no time. Guys, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to check out the goodies that we've left you below. Free trial for our membership. We'll connect you with players with the same skill, same ability in your area, and the free forehand course. So definitely check that out in the comments. If you enjoyed this, hit the like button and share with the buddies. Share it with someone you think will, will find it helpful as well. We'll see you next time.